Hi everyone, this is Elena Kraus and welcome to another card video. In this video, I will show you a card using the new Picket Fence Studio, a lily bouquet along with the um, levels of friendship stamp set and the use of the Misty for stamping or stamping a couple times to have a good coverage onto more textured ca cardstock like watercolor paper. So let's get started. Here are the stamp sets that I'll be using. That's the Lily Bouquet. It's the new October release along with the Levels of Friendship. And I'll be using the sentiment that says, a good friend knows all the stories, but the best friend is in all in them. So um, I'm starting with a piece of cardstock, uh, not cardstock, but watercolor paper. I'm using cold press uh, Fabriano watercolor paper. And I'll position my stamp. This is one um, larger stamp. So when it comes to stamping with Versa Mark or um, with any other ink onto watercolor paper, uh, it's the use of the Misty comes handy because you can stamp several times to have good coverage, especially with big stamps and textured paper. So I positioned my cardstock there because I have the stamp uh, coming out of the edges, overlapping. And I secure it with two of the bar magnets to keep it uh, secure there. So I'm just inking my stamp once with Versamark and pressing nicely, making sure that I apply even pressure all over the stamp. And I'm going to go one more time to make sure that I have uh, perfect coverage. So when I emboss that image has nice uh, outline and it's more visible, kind of more defined. So next what I'm doing, uh, I'm applying detail white embossing powder all over the image, making sure that it's uh, nicely covered, that I'm not missing any spots because we're going to watercolor this image and if the lines are not um, complete, like fully embossed or if we don't have, didn't have a nice coverage with our Versamark ink, the watercolor will kind of bleed out of those lines and it will just create a big mess. So next I'm uh, heat setting the image and because I'm embossing white on white it's really hard to see here. So I'll be using my um, the cover uh, sheet of the um, stamp set as a guideline where to make sure that I'm coloring it correctly. So I'm not coloring petals where the leaves are supposed to be and vice versa. So I'm just picking some uh, Zik Clean Color Real Brush Markers and I picked uh, two pink and two orange. I'm using pale pink and darker pink as well orange and uh, paler orange to mix those. So for the petals I'm applying the pink onto the base of the petals and the orange on the top. I'm blending those two colors like the pinks with pinks and the orange with orange and then using a aqua painter, aqua brush I'm just blending everything together. So I'm doing it one petal at a time at the beginning and at the end you will notice as we um, move to other petals, I'll be doing more petals than once. So I'm gonna speed up the video very shortly here because there are quite a few petals and it took me about 40 minutes to color those and I bet you don't want to watch me for 40 minutes coloring those petals. So again as I said I'm applying the dark, darker marker or pen at the base and then blending it in a little bit with the lighter pink and then on the tip of the petal I'm applying the darker orange and then blending it with a lighter orange and then blending everything together with the aqua painter starting from the pink from the base of the petals going towards the tips and then going from the tips towards the base and kind of blending all those colors together. So here I've sped up the video can see I'm applying the darker print, blending with the lighter and then on the other side I'm going with the orange and the paler orange and blending in, blending everything in with the uh, watercolor water brush. So here we're coming towards the 
coloring the last flower and I'm repeating the same process however here I'm coloring all petals at once uh, meaning I'm applying first the darkest color, darkest pink to all petals then going with the lighter pink and then doing the same with the oranges and then blending everything together uh, with the watercolor brush so here we have now we have the little bulbs there buds and I'm coloring only with pink and then I'll just add a little bit of the orange on the tips of those uh, buds and then we're moving to the leaves so I picked out two green colors and I'm applying first the darker darker green and then blending uh, in a little bit with the lighter and then with the water brush so you can see here how the image is becoming more defined compared to the beginning where it was all white and we were not able to see what is what so to finish up the image I'm adding some brown onto the little centers of the flowers of the lilies and blending it in with uh, my water brush. Then I'm adding more pink where um, the parts that I didn't color because I had really hard time seeing which where sh the pink should be where the brown. So now that I have um, colored m the majority of the images it was easier to see as well. I compared it to the um, cover like acetate from the stamp set. So next to finish off my image I'm adding gray um, shadows around the image. I started with applying the marker directly pen to paper but then I scribbled some of the marker onto acrylic block, picked it up with my water brush and colored around the flowers. So next uh, the panel is done. Next is uh, adding the sentiment. I didn't want to take away from the nice the pretty watercolor image so I decided to stamp the sentiment onto some vellum and emboss in white and then adhere onto my panel that way you're still able to see the flowers, the image underneath so I'm again using my Misty to stamp that um, straight so I position it on the bottom corner there I secure it with uh, the bar magnets and apply some anti-static powder tool so I don't have speckled embossing powder all over the place onto the sentiment I did the same if you notice at the beginning uh, when I stamped the image first um, I recommend applying that anti-static embossing powder and then I'm applying the stamping and applying the embossing powder and heat setting it so now that the panel is stamped, embossed and trimmed I added some vellum adhesive on the back where the sentiment is and I turn it around and I fold it the remaining of that vellum and then I'm just securing it with some microspore tape you don't need to do that but I like to be flat on the back and then to add some dimension I'll be adding some fun foam and popping it up um, using it so I'm using a black top folding note card I scored it here at five and a half then I'm adding some um, Tombow extreme adhesive on the back of my panel adhering that um, fun foam and then I'm using liquid adhesive to adhere the panel onto my card base which allows me to move a little bit that car, uh, that panel so it's nicely and straight positioned and that finishes our card so here's a little close up and you can see all the blending and different colors on the image as well as the sentiment Thank you so much for stopping by today and don't forget to visit my blog as for more ideas and inspiration as well as to subscribe to it and to subscribe for my to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye!